So I'm here talking about New Zealand avocado. We are a horticulture industry. Biosecurity is very important for us. It's one of our biggest risks. So we manage biosecurity as an industry. We manage that across sectors. We work collaboratively with, the, with other sectors and with the government in order to implement a critical line of defence. And I'm going to share our story on biosecurity today, some of the successes we see in some collaboration, co collaborative programmes that are in place. But this is just the start of what we see a future in that biosecurity does become a habit for 4.7 million New Zealanders. So a little bit about the avocado industry. We grow in the north of the North Island, 60% of the Bay of Plenty, the remainder in Northland. We grow on the fertile soils, sunny, moderate climate, and we have a 70% of our crop is exported and 30% is sold in the New Zealand market. We have 1,500 growers, over 4,000 hectares. We have 11 exporters, 14 pack houses. We've got our biggest crop ever this year, 7.1 million trays, which you'll be pleased. I know the stories about the shortage of avocados in May and June this year became a little global story. I was actually phoned for interviews from 15 different countries about the shortage of avocados in New Zealand and the fact that people stole them in the dead of the night. <laughs> it was actually quite hard not to get a little bit <coughs> facetious at the end of that um, with reporters and say, oh, but that's what we did after school always. When you, on the way home from school, you always raided someone's orchard. But I thought that that probably wasn't the right thing to talk about for New Zealand. We operate under the Horticulture Export Authority model, which means that our exporters all must have a licence to, to export avocados. It does mean we have got rules in place, and those rules do include an export market strategy and some on-orchard systems, which do include biosecurity. We have an export season from August to March, but we do supply the New Zealand market 12 months of the year. Our process grade goes to three oil companies making avocado oil um, for consumers too. This is the FOB value of the New Zealand industry. We were a cottage industry. About 2011, we had a oversupply in the Australian market. It was a disastrous year for growers. We needed to change direction. We needed to change um, what we were doing. And we've succeeded in doing that with significant increases in industry value over the last three years and a, a very positive outlook for the current season. A lot of that to do with collaboration across the industry, some collective um, JVs between our exporters, the introduction of a primary growth partnership, and also, wonderfully, the, the rise and rise of the celebrity avocado globally. And we are very lucky that avocados globally are becoming a, a celebrity, have got celebrity status. And with the MPI here, I'm very happy to talk about our primary growth partnership. That's probably the start of a collaboration with the government through Crown funding. We had our PGP business case was submitted, the first one, um, or the first version of it, uh, in 2012. And we are in year three of that, and that has certainly supported significantly the increase in value across our industry. Growers recognise biosecurity as a risk. Many of our avocado growers are also kiwifruit growers, and it was a great story from James this morning about the, the PSA as a reality check on biosecurity and that has impacted a lot of our growers but also being in the Bay of Plenty influence significantly the way we all think. And as an industry body we are mandated to, to manage biosecurity on behalf of our industry in order to protect that value. And so reading biosecurity, it was interesting actually, I um, was joking with my nearly grown up daughters 
about this presentation and talking about biosecurity, and they jokingly said, well, biosecurity, it's obviously the security of our biological industries. And I think absolutely that's what it is. It's got a, a more formal term in terms of exclusion, eradication, and management of pests and diseases that we don't want. And it's all about what processes and systems we put in place to manage biosecurity, and it's fantastic that we're starting with a, this number of people willing and wishing to participate in how we do manage biosecurity. And from our side, we manage it with the government in terms of at national, but at a regional and an orchard level. And our industry focus is on improving our influence in the government, improving grower awareness and improving grower participation. Again, the message that I think most speakers are, are, are pushing through promoting today in terms of that participation. And so what does that mean for New Zealand avocado, for our avocado industry? We employ a biosecurity manager. Brad Siebert is in the table near the back. Um, so Brad is our expert in biosecurity. We have a high health scheme which he manages for our nurseries. We have as an industry signed the government industry agreement and the fruit fly operational agreement. And we are committed, our growers and our board, to GII readiness and response programs. And government industry agreements, absolutely a partnership. It's enabling informed discussion about the biosecurity system. It's setting up a structure for action. And it's about sharing costs and decision making. And just bringing in the costs, obviously it's a burden on industries, but by bringing in and sharing costs, it actually means we have to play our part and make sure when we are agreeing, when we are negotiating deeds and contracts, because we are paying, it's amazing how much more buy-in we know we need to have. And that negotiation of where we get to, and originally when we looked at the government industry agreement and the fruit fly agreement, we talked about industry and government negotiating. It was actually a while down the track before we realised we hadn't really talked about how industry would negotiate between each other. And you can imagine that industries our size versus industries pip fruit size, which is about three times the size as our, us, kiwi fruit 12 times as big as avocados. And that's okay, we can negotiate across horticultural industries, but then we're negotiating at the same table as dairy, as meat, as equine, as poultry. So there's a lot of different negotiation intending to get a consensus outcome. And interestingly, at dinner last night, we had 20 of us at the table, and Roger, who did a no speech at the beginning, said, it's really difficult getting 20 people to, by consensus, to agree on a wine choice. So he said, I've made the decision for you. And absolutely, consensus is difficult, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't be doing it. And I think, um, as an industry and as a, um, as a country, we should be proud that we have advanced to have government industry agreements, a fruit fly agreement, and that we're carrying on improving our biosecurity systems. And it also raises significantly the visibility of biosecurity. Because biosecurity in the peace times, in my office, biosecurity used to sit in the corner. It used to sit in Brad's office and before him, Henry Pack's office. And until there was an issue with biosecurity, we didn't really need to know about it. And suddenly we've got very significant contracts we're signing. As CEO, what do I need to know? Quite a lot now. When I go to my board and say we need to sign a contract with the government, with other industries, we all need to know what we're talking about. We need to have an interest in it. Not only that, even with, and Brad, with talking across his team, our R&D manager needs to know about it, our industry systems manager needs to know, our New Zealand market manager needs to know. So we're starting that conversation, starting that increase in the visibility of biosecurity, making sure we are much better informed. 
And so signing the first operational agreement for Fruit Fly, a great moment. It was a long negotiation, but it does work. And it's not perfect, but we shouldn't expect it to be perfect because we talk about we need to be agile in the systems we have on biosecurity because we're actually going to deal with things we've never dealt with before because that's what we're saying is we don't want, we haven't got these pests and we're going to have to deal with them. So that agility is needed in terms of how we contract, how we set up our systems. And as leaders and governors, we need to be agile in our thinking and looking outside the box, looking innovatively at how we do look at biosecurity and finding solutions to keep our clean, green New Zealand. I actually just added this little slide um, because I did need to be able to introduce somehow um, Ollie the Avocado, who we've only just um, developed as our um, spokesman now for avocados, so, but it did fit into my slide as well. Um, and I am thinking we are going to use him for some of our biosecurity messaging, Brad. But we are proactive as an industry. Brad does write in every magazine. We put these out, Avo seen out five times a year. There's now a pest watch. There's now a um, what you need to look at, look for in your orchard, or there's a um, look out for brown marmorate stink bug. We're putting that messaging out to our growers, to our industry. We are through Avo Green, Avo Green, which is our on orchard growing system. We're now using our Avo Green monitors. We're training them and educating them on priority pests. So we're pushing out the message using their expertise to further the message to push the word out. We always talk about biosecurity at our field days and we, we share the message at all of the grower meetings that we have. This I really liked, it actually was put out just before our Easter um, publication of Avocene, really just saying, we need you to know about you, we need you to be looking, we need, you're on the orchard, we need you to be looking out um, and obviously following that up with, with information. And from what I've heard today, there's an awful lot of information and we need to be start making sure we are sharing that information um, in terms of what we say about our pests or the pests um, we don't want. We have, as an industry, had a couple of significant incidences on biosecurity. This is a good story. We did have a a suspected pathogen found on avocados in the US in 2011 that did hold up the avocados and cause a real um, drama in our industry. It was about a month into our four month export season. But in terms of data and diagnostics, they were provided because we'd had an incident previously and that proved the absence of disease and the decision was reversed within five days. So this is just one example of proactive activity, of information we've had, of where we've been prepared for issues that we do have in market. And as we're talking, as we're engaging here today, this is a number of people that we engage with in biosecurity. This is talking about how do we make sure that we're not doubling up? How do we make sure we're learning from other experts that we're sharing their knowledge, their networks, and collaborating where we can? Because we need to, because the amount of research we need to keep doing on biosecurity is going to be is never ending. So um, just a number of the um, entities that we deal with in avocados and in horticulture. And looking at talking about Port of Tauranga. Obviously an amazing entrance coming into Tauranga and Port of Tauranga are recognising the importance, the part they can play in biosecurity and there's a very good initiative with, the, with that KVH and Zespri have instigated that we're part of um, with the Port of Tauranga um, which is making sure that all cruise ship passengers, and I think there's now 83 cruise ships coming in every year, that they're all much more aware of biosecurity issues um, and it was lovely having the dogs. Um, and a team of MPI down at the port um, when this initiative was opened about a year ago. But we're also, there's a capability network being set up, there's a fruit fly working group, biosecurity managers get together informally but um, 
as a great way of sharing information, knowledge and research. We work closely with Sesbury, with KBH, with Pipfruit. Brad's used to work at Plant Health Australia, so he's got some good links in there, and we continue looking at those. And obviously making sure we keep in contact and linked in with our regional council biosecurity staff as well. So it's about building capability. It's about all of us recognising we need to build capability. And biosecurity managers, and biosecurity leadership, and in biosecurity governance. And I saw Graham Marshall at lunchtime and I said I was going to make a comment here on whether, there's, whether we need to make sure we upskill directors on biosecurity. I did go onto the Institute of Directors website and I did a search on biosecurity. I didn't get any results. So I did one on finance. I got 65 results on the first, first look. So I think we just have to recognise that we shouldn't be just relying on an expert on a board that has biosecurity knowledge. We need to make sure that biosecurity governance is part of what we have um, on our boards across New Zealand. Same message, it's about that becoming biosecurity becoming a habit for all of us and for us to be thinking about how those messages are shared and I think we've heard some fantastic suggestions of how that's already happening and how it carries on happening with the intention of having 4.5 million biosecurity monitors. But we're not there yet. We certainly shouldn't be stopping and saying, great, we've got a system in place. There's still a lot of work to do. As I said, our focus areas are influence in the government, increasing our grower awareness and increasing grower participation, and we're working uh, well on that. We're also working through our supply chain, which obviously is service providers to our industry as well. Again, making sure we're engaging, making sure we're talking capability building and promoting collaborative efforts on surveillance between MPI and the industry. And our goal to have a higher level of resource and capability in biosecurity, to be more responsive to changing risk profiles, to have effective, efficient tools in place and obviously all to be part of a world-class biosecurity system. And that is me. Thank you.